In this lesson of basic electricity, we're going to talk about meters and meter usage. In the grand scheme of things, this is lesson two of our basic electrical series. If you haven't looked at lesson one yet, please go back and look because some of the concepts from that one are going to come over into this. So I want to talk about meters and meter usage. Your meter is going to be the most often and most important tool that you're going to use as an HVAC technician. It should be the first tool out of your tool bag, and it should be the last tool you put away. Make sure you read the manual that came with your meter and understand all of the functions. There are two basic types of meters on the market. First, the analog meters that have been the workforce of the industry for years. These were the first meters on the market. They're extremely sensitive and do not stand up well to being tossed around trucks. They're still used today when technicians are looking for extremely accurate measurements. This is an example of an analog meter. You do have to look hard to find them anymore because we've gone to mostly digital meters. Digital meters have almost completely replaced the analog ones in the industry. Digital meters stand up much better to being dropped and tossed around a truck and have a wide range of temperatures that they can work at. Digital meters are more accurate and usually auto range. This is an example of an older digital meter. There are several basic electrical rules you have to understand prior to understanding what a meter is telling you. Most of these rules are based on voltage and resistance. You'll hear technicians talk about things in series with something else. In series means in the same line as. We'll talk more about series circuits in the next section. But this is an example of a series circuit. The red ball is in series with the yellow and the green ball. In other words, to follow this path of wire, to get to the red ball, you either have to go through the yellow or the green. Okay, they're in series with each other. Parallel means next to. Okay, again, we're going to talk more about parallel circuits, but in order to sort of understand meters, we have to identify what a parallel circuit is. The red, the yellow, and the green balls are all in parallel with each other. They're next to each other. I can send an electrical current through the yellow without going into the red or the green. Same with the green. I can send an electrical current through here without affecting the yellow or the red. They're next to each other. They're in parallel. Open circuits are circuits that do not have a complete path for electricity to flow. Circuits require a source, a switch, a path, and a load. If any of these components has a break or an open in the current circuit, it cannot complete its circuit. This is an example of an open circuit. See the break here where the switch is open? That electricity cannot jump across that break, so the current flow stops right here at SW1. When you measure voltage across an open circuit, you always get the reading of source voltage. Commit that to memory. Voltage across an open circuit is always source. When you measure resistance across an open circuit, you'll always get a reading of infinity or OL. A closed or complete circuit is one that has a closed or complete path, which is a source, switch, and a load. The load is operational in a complete circuit. The switch is closed in a complete circuit. This is a closed or complete circuit because, again, our, our current or electrons can flow through the complete circuit from line through switch one through the bulb or the load, whatever it is, and back to neutral. When measuring voltage across a switch on a complete circuit, you get zero volts. When measuring voltage across a complete circuit, you'll always get source. Voltage across a load is identical if the load is working or if the load is bad. Okay, If the load is working, it's going to be, let's say, 120 volts across a light bulb. If the load is bad, it's still going to be 120 volts because the load is open. The only difference is, if it's working, it's generating light and heat. If you have all the switches closed and measure voltage across the load, the circuit is good. If the load is not working, then you have a bad load. If the load is working, 
then the voltage you read is the voltage that that load is using. Current is another measurement. The current or amperage you measure will be zero in an open circuit because there's no movement of electrons. In a closed circuit, the amperes you measure may change based on where you take your readings. But if you measure zero amps, there's no voltage moving. There's no current flow. There's nothing happening with the circuit. Most meters will measure voltage, current, resistance, capacitance, frequency, and temperature. Voltage will be the one of the most frequent measurements you take. To measure voltage, turn your meter on and set it to volts or V depending on what your meter shows. Make sure your leads are plugged into the correct place on the meter. Put the leads in parallel with or next to the point in the circuit you're trying to measure. Hold the lead steady without touching any of the metal to your fingers or each other. Watch the display until the meter stabilizes on a number. That is your reading. So in this case, I have two meter leads across the open switch. The meter is actually in parallel. See, my meter's here, and it's next to the switch labeled SW1 because it's in parallel. Voltage across an open switch is always source. Again, L1 in neutral, 120 volt source, and I'm measuring 120 volts. If I close that switch, the voltage across a closed switch, okay, is always zero. So we've closed the switch, and we now have zero volts because it's closed. Voltage across a non-powered load is always zero. I don't have any difference in potential, which is what my meter is measuring, because the current is stopping here. So everything is on the neutral side, because I don't have my line side coming to the load. Voltage across a powered load is always source, if it's the only load in series. We'll talk more about series circuit, but voltage across a powered load is going to be source. Voltage across an open powered load, in other words, the filament in the light bulb is broken, is also always going to be source. Because right here, that little break in that filament that you saw before I draw the lines in, okay, is actually still an open switch, basically. Okay, so if I erase the pen here, if you look at this little filament, look closely, that's an open. So I don't have any current flowing here, so I have a difference in potential. The only difference between this and this is that in one case the load is working, it doesn't have a broken filament, and in this case there's a broken filament and the load is not working, but it's still going to be source. The difference is that the load is not working. Voltage across a full circuit will always be source. L1 to neutral is always going to be source. If you don't have source here, you don't have power coming to the circuit. Now, to measure resistance of a circuit, this is extremely important. Disconnect the circuit from the source. With resistance measurements, you cannot have any power on the circuit. You'll break your meter. Decide what component or portion of the circuit you want to measure. Disconnect the wires to and remove that part. You can only take resistance of components if they're isolated. Set your meter to ohms and touch one lead directly to the other. That should show a zero reading of zero on your meter. If it doesn't, check your leads for damage and make sure they're plugged into the right spots on your meter. Always check, test your leads when you're doing resistance readings. Now touch one lead to each side of the component or the isolated portion of the circuit you're testing. Wait for the display to stabilize and record that number. That is the resistance. Resistance is always shown in ohms. By the way, occasionally you'll see this symbol. That's the Greek ohm symbol, the omega symbol. That's a measurement of resistance. So again, resistance across an open switch is going to show OL, or infinite. There's no way for any current to pass across that open switch. 
resistance across this closed switch is always going to be zero. It's closed. Resistance across a good load is going to be some number. Resistance across an open load is going to be OL or an infinite because again, I have it open right there. To measure current, the first step is you want to determine which method you want to use. It's possible to use the clamp meter for higher voltages and currents. It's possible to put the meter in line for low voltage and currents. 90% of the time you're going to use the clamp meter. So make sure you close the switch to energize the circuit. You'll clamp the meter across one wire. Again, let me make this clear. One wire. You can't clamp across L1 and neutral or L1 and L2. You have to clamp across one lead with your clamp meter. And as long as the circuit is operational, it's going to show a number. To measure current with the clamp on meter, make sure the system is running. Clamp the meter around a single wire and wait until the number is stabilized. That's your amperage reading. Now, you can also maximize it. You can wrap the same wire okay, on the same side of the circuit like 10 times around the clamp and your reading is 2 amps. Then you'll divide it by 10 and come up with 0.2. Okay, so again, if the current is too low, put the meter in line. If that's not possible because of voltages, wrap the wire around the clamp 5 to 10 times. Take your reading. Divide the number you get by the number of times the wire is wrapped around the clamp. For example, if the wire is wrapped 10 times around the clamp, your reading is 2 amps. Then 2 divided by 10 is 0.2 amps. To put your meter in line, put the meter in series with the circuit. In other words, you're basically going to put one lead, you're going to break the circuit, your meter, and then your other lead. So the current will flow through the meter as part of the circuit. Make sure to the power to the circuit is turned off. Check with your voltmeter to verify this is the case. Disconnect a wire directly before the component you're concerned about and put your meter in series or in line with the component to complete the circuit. Make sure the meter is set to amps and the leads are plugged into the correct spots. Turn the circuit back on, allow the display to stabilize, and take this is your amperage reading. This is very important that you make sure you do not overload your meter. So double check your meter manual to see how many amps and what the voltages are that your meter can handle in this thing. You don't want to put 20 amps through your meter. It will make your meter sort of explode. Make sure you know the levels of voltage and current your meter is rated for. Never exceed this voltage or current. If you suspect that this is close, use the clamp on method. Unfortunately, most of the time you'll not just have one switch controlling a load. Most circuits in the HVAC industry have more than one control device. You must have a reliable, organized method to find problems in the circuit. This is why most good technicians start off any diagnostic by using the hopscotch method to trace circuits. The procedure is very simple. First, make sure your meter is set to volts and make sure the leads are correctly plugged into the appropriate places on the meter. Next, check the voltages across the two endpoints of the circuit, line and neutral or line and line. Put the meter at the, put one meter lead at the start point on the circuit, in our case L1. Keep the lead there. You, if you have an alligator clip on it, leave it. Use the second lead to go from point to point in the circuit before and after each switching device and the load, checking for opens until you find the problem. So in this example, we're tested voltage across L1 and L2. It's 120. We have power to the circuit. Now, voltage between L1 and the line side of switch 1 is 0, so that wire is good. Okay, voltage across L1 and the load side of SW1 is 120. Switch 1 is open. Remember, voltage across an open switch is always source. And we can verify that that problem is by now starting from neutral. And we work backwards, back to the switch, and again we come across switch 1, and it's 120. Now you're thinking to yourself, why do I need to know this? Because I can look and see that the switch is open. No, you can't. 
This is in a container. Switch one is in a piece of metal, piece of plastic, or something like that. So you'll have two leads. You won't be able to see if that switch is actually open or closed. In this case, problem found, switch one is open. So again, when we get back to the shop projects, for those of you who are doing this on your own, just to learn something new, seeing the video on YouTube, okay, look down in the comments, you'll find where the project is for number two. Okay, because what you're gonna do is use your meter and trace the circuit from shop project one. If you get this complete and have additional time, ask your instructor for a second circuit to work on. So again, meter use, very important. Resistance, measurement in ohms, make sure the components are isolated and no power on the circuit. That's for your own safety.